Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Dallas here with SFR. Here to show you how to install one of our new Sledgehammer Series front bumpers for the 21 and up Ford Bronco full size. Uh, before we get started, let me just uh, tell you a little bit about this bumper and uh, some of the features. Number one, all the sensors transfer over from the stock bumper. They all function, including the adaptive cruise control. Uh, we went to great lengths to try and get them all in the right position, right angle, so everything functions exactly how it did with the factory bumper. Uh, that's something a lot of companies out there, they just throw the sensors in there and they're in weird places and they don't exactly work the way they're supposed to. So we put a lot of effort into uh, making sure all that works. Uh, also, those of you with the Lux package, the adaptive cruise control, there's no relocation needed, no special brackets, no messing around. Uh, there's no extensions needed for the sensors. Everything works, just plug and play. All you do is uh, transfer the wiring over from the old bumper and we'll show you how to do that. Um, in addition, as you can see, we got a mount here where we got holes drilled in the bumper already for up to five lights. Um, these are size, these are the uh, Baja Design Squadrons. We're super happy, these are amazing lights, super high quality. Um, now, if you're looking for a winch setup, obviously this is not a winch setup. Our focus on this was super high clearance. You gain all this clearance here by the tire. Uh, lightweight, uh, the primary structure of this is eighth inch steel with uh, thicker metal in all the heavy duty high load points, uh, your toe shackles and um, winch mounts. So I mentioned a minute ago, this is not a winch bumper, but it can be. Uh, right here, this is the optional add-on winch bracket. It just slides right in here where all the lights are, it uses the same bolt holes across the top uh, as the lights, and that also bolts into your recovery points where the shackles are. Uh, there's dedicated holes there. So you can still have your shackles on there. You can still use a toe strap, um, but also have the winch bracket in place. Now, obviously, when you put the winch bracket on there, you're not gonna be able to put the lights there because you're gonna have a winch right there. In fact, the winch even uses two of the same bolt holes that the lights do. Um, next question I'm sure you're gonna ask is about the camera. Well, if you're gonna put a winch on here, you do have to relocate the camera. There's really no way around that because winch sits right up, right up in front of it. Uh, we recommend just get one of the brackets that goes right on the winch fair lead. You'll have a great view out the front that way. In addition, if you're running the winch and uh, you do wanna add some lights, this grill here is a uh, separate piece. It, it just bolts in to provide access for when you're, when you're mounting up the bumper to get to the mounting brackets. Um, take that out and we're gonna be offering brackets that bolt in there and you can put one light on each side so that you can uh, add a little bit of lighting there. It'll fit uh, to the squadrons. We got some pictures on the website you can see. Uh, so you can get a little extra light and have your winch up front. Uh, also, in addition to the bumper, you'll see here we've got our skid plate down here. We sell a full skid plate package for, uh, for the Broncos with this front skid, the uh, differential engine skid plate, covers up the axle there, replaces the, uh, if you've got the stock bash plates, these replace those. We also have a transmission skid and a transfer case skid. Um, as well as for you V6 guys, like on this one, uh, there's those diagonal um, cross member braces uh, that, that hang down and they're, they're really prone to getting dragged across rocks and they're pretty thin steel, they tend to get gouged up. We got skid plates to go on those as well. But getting back to the bumper, uh, let's rewind in time back to when this thing had a stock bumper on it. And I will show you all that you gotta do. So let's get to all it. Right, so the first thing we gotta do here is remove the stock bumper. And this process is essentially the same for all of the bumpers that come on the Bronco. Uh, first thing is we gotta disconnect the wiring. Um, if you got the, the sensors, the fog lights, there's going to be a wiring harness 
it's really not something you can see. I'm not going to be able to fully get it on camera. The connector is right up in this area behind the grill. You reach up behind here and there's a, uh, on the connector, there's a little tab that you squeeze that releases it and then you can pull it down and unplug it. So I just did it there. I uh, wish I could show you better, but I'll show you the wiring harness once we get the bumper off. Uh, next thing, in order to access the bolts that hold the bumper on, you got to pop off the covers. Uh, really just pull on them, uh, being kind of careful they got clips all the way along. Same thing with the capable bumper and the um, modular as well. Just give it a little tug. This will come down. Now you got your parking sensors here. I find the little cup that they fit in, if you just kind of spread the tabs apart very slightly, being gentle, you can slide the sensor right out. All right, now your bumper is held on by six 12 millimeter bolts. They use a 15 millimeter socket. Uh, take all of them out. As you get to the last one, just be prepared to grab that bumper. The plastic one's really lightweight, capable and modular, a little heavier. You might want a friend, but most of them are uh, not too bad. So we are going to be reusing the wiring from our factory bumper. Uh, depending on which bumper you have, the process here might be a little bit different, but uh, they're all pretty similar in that you got to pull the internal structure apart. Uh, in this case, we got a plastic bumper here and four 10 millimeter bolts, four uh, 15, sorry, that's the socket size you'll use. And this piece is gonna come out of here and enable us to unclip our wiring and remove it. We got our uh, four smaller bolts here. Use a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna pull those out. And then on either side, there are two uh, sockets use a 15 millimeter. those out as well. And earlier I was showing you how to uh, unplug the light and you couldn't see it or the uh, wiring harness but this is the plug right here it's held in with a little plastic clip on the bumper. All right so now that we've got this inner bracing loose the one thing holding it in is our wiring harness here. So I just got a little clip removal tool and you just pry it right out of the bumper. Uh, the other bumpers are a little bit different, but procedure is basically the same. We're just trying to get access to our wiring harness. Let's get this out of the way here. All right. Now our wiring harness is all exposed. We can unplug it from the fog lamps if we have them. And our uh, parking sensors may not actually fit through the holes in the bumper, so you'll probably have to unplug them. I recommend plugging them right back into the harness. That way uh, it makes it really easy to keep track of which sensor goes where. And just work your way along. The harness has little clips holding it into the bumper various spots just carefully wiggle them out of the out of their holes got parking sensor again all right so now the wiring harness is all loose and ready to be installed into the new bumper 
So now that we got the uh, old bumper out of the way and we've got our wiring harness already, uh, it's time to prep the new bumper. Uh, now for those of you that don't have the front parking sensors, we supply these caps that fit in the holes, cover it all up, make it look nice and, uh, nice and smooth. But uh, for those of us who do have the sensors, like this wild track, the first thing we need to do for the parking sensors is install these grommets. They're just a simple rubber grommet. They fit in there. And then the sensors push into the grommet. They hold pretty tight. If you want to, as an extra measure, you can uh, add a little bit of black RTV in there to really glue them in place. Uh, I haven't found that to be necessary, but it is something you can do. So all we do is just kind of squeeze them in there and make sure the the uh, groove is fully seated and the lip on the back side is fully engaged. We just put one in each hole. All right, now we've got those in there. We can turn the bumper over, get to the inside. All right, so now we've got uh, access to the inside of the bumper. I'm gonna start by installing our wiring harness. You'll notice all the brackets have these big windows cut in, which is designed for the wiring to slide through. So we're gonna start on the driver's side and just start passing things all the way through. So in a few spots, let's see if I can get the camera to focus, we've included little uh, little slots there for zip ties to slide through so that you can tie off the, uh, the wiring harness. So I'll see if I can get one in here right now. So now you can see we can take the harness, tie that in place with the zip tie. And we'll do that in a couple locations all the way across to the other side. All right, so now you can see we've got our harness kind of loosely uh, installed there. And like I said, these, uh, these sensors that go in, they are position sensitive, uh, meaning they're rotation. So you do want to make sure they're in the same orientation they were when they came out, and they're also in the same places. Uh, we've had okay luck with swapping side to side for like the inners and the outers But uh, you don't want to put them in sideways. You don't want to put them in upside down uh, Because they're kind of the area that they're looking at It's not a big circle like you you might think since they're a round sensor They actually look in kind of a, a wide flat band. So if you have them put in crooked upside down, whatever uh, you may get some false readings and have some uh, annoying beeping going on when you shouldn't. So those are all in there now. Like I said, I left the uh, zip ties a little loose because I'm going to go ahead and install some lights on this bumper before we put it on. Uh, you can install the lights with the bumper installed on the vehicle, but they go into the row of holes across the top here. And of course, your access for tightening them up is there across the inside. Um, you'll notice that reinforcing strip, that's because those same holes get used for the optional winch bracket. Uh, it bolts on there and actually the, the inner holes there um, get used by the winch. Uh, it kind of sandwiches through there. Um, so obviously putting the lights on now is a lot easier because you got easy access to all those uh, inside bolt holes. So I'm going to go ahead and mount those up right now and uh, then we'll get it installed on the Bronco. Alright so skipping forward in time a little bit here I got all our lights installed. I went with five of Baja Design Squadron lights. Uh, the outer two 
once I get up there, you'll see are the uh, are there SAE series that are the street legal ones that you can drive on the road. And uh, I plug those directly into the factory fog lamp wiring. So those will come on with the factory headlamp fog lamp switch. Uh, the other three in the middle set it squadron pros for all that light off road. And uh, those will get wired into one of the uh, auxiliary switches up on the on the ceiling. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the bumper mounted up. Uh, one thing with this is unlike the factory bumper, the mounting points on this one are a little bit more hidden. You have to reach in kind of through the grill to get to them. So it can be a little difficult to hold the bumper in place by yourself and get the bolts in. Um, so I do recommend having a helper. I don't have a helper today. Um, however, one trick we figured out is uh, you take the factory bolts in the outermost uh, spots here and you put them in from the back side and it gives you a stud to kind of hang the bumper on while you're getting the inner ones started. And then you can pull those bolts back out again as you, uh, as you get installed, put the new bolts in the, uh, in the bumper from the front side where they belong. Just gives you a nice way to hang the bumper easily. Um, so also mention we supply these shorter bolts. The factory bolts are super long, uh, long enough that it makes it kind of difficult to get them in um, into place with this bumper. So we supply shorter bolts. Uh, so have those ready and uh, have the wrench ready for them as well. Let me go ahead and get this thing in place. First bolt started. Over this side. get all the bolts up. All the bolts are in there. You can wiggle wiggle things around, make sure it's all nice and in place, and then go go ahead and torque it down. Big one not to forget here, make sure to uh, plug this wiring harness back in. It's actually a little bit easier to get to now. This bumper doesn't uh, block access quite as much as the stock one, but it's an easy one to forget as well. And then none of your parking sensors work. I've done that. All right, so here's the cover up panel. Uh, as you saw, I was able to mount the bumper by reaching in here. You can also reach up and get to the uh, bolt holes for, for all your lights and everything. Once this is on there, obviously that becomes a little bit more difficult, but uh, dresses it up a little. And as you can see, we left a window open for the adaptive cruise control sensor 
Uh, for those of you that don't have adaptive cruise control, um, if there's demand, we can make different uh, different ones of these grills that maybe have different designs, don't have that opening. Uh, let us know. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Uh, be sure to check out stinkyfab.com to see all the new and exciting stuff we got coming out. We got a lot of new products coming out these days and uh, hope to see you all on the trail soon.